Welcome to this call as a um, signed up member of uh, the uh, data analytics uh, customer experience or metrics. This will be a very insightful information set for you to proceed on why you should join, how you should join, and what you can look forward to. Um, this slide shows you some of our Workstream leaders. You will see their names mentioned on the uh, following slides at the bottom of the slides in an orange bar. So you can uh, relate to the fact that we are a uh, forum of the members and by the members. These are the leaders who run the various work streams within these three projects. So our agenda is to give you a flavor of what the customer centricity program is, which as I said earlier, is consists of data analytics, customer experience management, and metrics. Um, what does it mean for you to get involved? Why should you get involved? And how do you get involved? That's what we will talk about. One of the big things we do at um, TM Forum is to develop common language so that industry um, can uh, speak with a common uh, frame of reference in partnering, in communicating, in progressing their work. We do this through a very unique uh, set of principles, which we call collaboration. Um, this is very, very unique among uh, a lot of uh, industry uh, bodies. Um, we are probably one of the few, if not the only one, who does uh, work which is driven by members working collaboratively so that you can get uh, new ideas and, and thoughts and, and best practices and so on. Uh, published and documented very quickly and very timely with the industry's needs. Um, so we, as I said earlier, we are a uh, virtual and physical meeting place for curious minds to share ideas and define solutions. What we do produce, as I said, is common language for guides, best practices, reference models, data architectures, processes. Um, and we go through uh, tackling the uh, hard challenges, you know, of thought leadership uh, in the age of uh, open digital and uh, environment, smart X applications moving from DevOps uh, to um, from NetOps to DevOps and and virtualized networks. The collaboration process um, consists of various um, places and, and modes of, of coming together and joining hands. Uh, we have online communities where we can engage in robust discussions on specific topics or challenges. Uh, we have on work streams conference calls which are usually weekly and in some cases they are bi-weekly. We have action days again where, where members from various member companies come together to uh, work on a predefined problem or set of problems. And then uh, twice a year we have action weeks um, where there is an entire uh, week worth of members coming together to discuss, define, work through solutions for uh, existing problems. Um, you as a member can work in any of these, you know, or chatting um, and and participating in online communities probably needs only a few minutes of your time a day. Um, conference call, attending weekly conference calls needs an hour, maybe two hours a week, depending on how many calls you're attending. Action days are really one day events which happen once in a while. Action weeks are a week long, so you can work at a level that works for you and your company. What we go through is collaboration, we facilitating consensus building, leading to an end product of, of new ideas, paradigm shifters, uh, which can be easy to use, easy to implement. We have two kinds of projects that we work with. Collaboration projects, which are uh, uh, the projects that, that action weeks and action days are on. They are creating the best practices, standards, guides that I 
alluded to earlier. We publish this two times a year, sometimes a little more than two times a year. That's why it says two plus. Uh, these groups are open to all members and a any company with a membership ha can um, uh, add their members into any of these projects uh, without any additional charge. So it's free to participate. Catalysts are short-term uh, proofs of concepts. They are demos. The teams include a user champion uh, who is typically a, a, a service provider and uh, about four uh, other companies who could be uh, vendors uh, or system integrators and typically they prove out concepts or uh, new concepts which they demo in um, at least two events in a year, sometimes more than two. Um, the last event was in Nice in Paris in, in May and we have one coming up in, in Singapore in December and another one in Dallas, US in November. So, the, so keep in mind these two uh, types of projects, collaboration projects and catalyst projects because I might use those words uh, um, in the future so you know what they are. One is to develop uh, standards and, and documents which become our asset library. The other is proof of concept demoable products. The customer centricity program like I told you earlier was consists of three projects. Customer experience management, big data analytics and metrics. Um, our driving principles are using customer experience as a differentiator. Um, we, uh, there was an interesting statistic that I came across recently on a study done by Deloitte which said that companies that are customer centric are 60 times, I'm sorry, 60 percent more profitable than companies who are not which is a really stunning um, figure and a very uh, you know, uh, sharp uh, differentiator need for companies to become more customer centric. We all know that, that analytics are, are necessary. There is a lot of analytics that companies are doing now. Analytics have matured a great deal to go into, uh, you know, uh, uh, prescriptive and predictive analytics in looking into the future. Companies are still not using them consistently however there's a lot of room for companies to collaborate and come up with best practices and guides and standards in this area. We also talk about customer centricity in this uh, uh, digital ecosystem as ecosystems are getting more digitized and more complex with multiple partners uh, uh, forming value fabrics and, and services becoming more complex. Uh, keeping the customer at the center of all of that is, is a challenge and uh, we are working on standards and guides and so on um, on those lines too. So those are our driving principles for these covering these three uh, projects. Some of the types of challenges that we look to work through are things like how do you create a, a right channel or an omni-channel experience, an Amazon or an Uber type of experience in a value fabric which is not just a value chain but multiple partners, you know, providing partial you know, one component or two components of a full service and how do you make that uh, a, a right channel experience in a virtual environment. How do I know if my CEO customer experience management is working from a customer's perspective and what is the ROI from, from being investing in becoming customer experience oriented. How should I be using my data analytics? Um, um, to, to be able to do, do faster, better, cheaper uh, value out of my data. How do I do that? How do I create a metrics data driven culture? Um, how do I become more citizen centric in, uh, in smart city? That's just an example of one smart uh, area. How can I become, uh, you know, resident centric in a smart home? How can I become, uh, you know, uh, customer centric in a, in, a, in, a, in a smart health, you know, all, all, how can I do all of this in a system, systematic fashion? These are the kinds of challenges and new paradigm shifting areas that we try to work on in these programs. 
So this is an interesting slide uh, to show you that um, we have a set of common challenges which are uh, foundational to any company creating their own uh, unique solutions and therefore their own identities and brands. So the bottom three layers of, the, of this pyramid, which are to do with infrastructure and enablement, uh, security, privacy, regulation, customer and data centricity. These are common foundational challenges. This is the area we work on. We do not work on what is proprietal or unique to a company which is creating your own differentiators. Our collaboration and also all our uh, demos for the Catalyst projects are in this lower uh, layers, lower three layers, which uh, are we call as our common challenges. For our collaboration projects, we, as I was saying, we do two releases a year, sometimes more often. It starts at the end of one release, which uh, as an example, we just completed a release in June of 2016. Uh, we do member collaborations, best practice uh, uh, catalyst projects, the development of those. Uh, we meet in um, for Action Week one week, which we did in July uh, two weeks ago in Vancouver, and we continue through our weekly calls discussions uh, to produce the next set of work, which will be released in December. Um, in the release number is 16.5, at which point we start the cycle all over again. Now I will specifically go into customer experience management. I did notice um, uh, that a uh, few people have joined uh, uh, while I had, after I started talking. So I'm going to stop for a second and uh, tell you that um, you should note uh, the the uh, any questions that you have. Um, Perhaps if you know, make a note of it. Type it in the chat box. If I'm able to cover them within the hour, we definitely will. If not, then um, if you would drop a note to to me at the end of this call, uh, we'll try to answer those um, via email. So, customer experience management. Um, so this is a, a, a something that we did a survey on uh, to see where customers are, uh, you know, where companies are in terms of their customer experience management. And, you know, without going into details on these numbers, I wanted to share with you that uh, there are lots of areas of customer experience that that companies are concerned with. Getting a holistic view of the customer, understanding their needs, providing them with responsive support in which I would also include omni-channelized support, understanding profitability, meeting SLA conditions for them, um, et cetera, et cetera. All of these are very uh, important challenges in the area of uh, customer engagement. So the, the most companies uh, are today, um, most companies, not all companies, um, especially the companies which are not digital native. In other words, they are, they, they are not an Amazon uh, or an Uber type of company. They have an out, inside out view of, of what they need to provide to the customer. Um, companies like uh, Amazon and Uber are what we call an outside in view. They have designed everything around the fact that they want to make the customer's experience uh, consistent, smooth, seamless, and uh, you know, uh, just just the very best experience. So, customer experience. Um, our entire uh, our driving principle in that is how do we make an out inside out to outside in view of uh, what the customer is, uh, you know, looking for. So today what we have in our published um, uh, resource library is a guidebook, a life cycle model. We have metrics, maturity model, ROI calculator, uh, 
For omni-channel, we have maturity model requirements for omni-channel uh, functional architecture. 360 degree view of the customer, we also have a life cycle model, journey analytics, uh, personas, customer sentiment, and then we have a 40 use cases and an implementation guide of how uh, those use cases can be implemented, which gives a very quick uh, way for a company to start up a CEM department and start creating a more customer-centric approach to their operations. Um, this is, um, you know, kind of giving you a pictorial view. There's a maturity model um, on the uh, bottom uh, left side. Above that is a an ROI uh, cal in calculator for investments. There's an example of um, the our we have uh, life cycle model. We have two life cycle models. One is a 360 degree view. This is the one that you're seeing here is a 360 degree view, which actually has insights, knowledge, experience, events, and channels uh, incorporated into it. So it's a it's a more rounded out view as opposed to a linear view, which which is only the three phases that you're seeing there. Uh, which is engaging, using, evaluating. We have over 550 metrics and then we have that whole slew of stuff that I talked about on Omnichannel. These are all available in our resource library. If you go to tmforum.org and go to standards and adoption and go to full uh, resource library, you can uh, do a search by keyword on any of these and you have access to all of these documents. Um, so, okay, so this says 33 use cases. We actually have 40 use cases. I, I'm sorry, I forgot to update this in the last cycle. Uh, we added seven more, so there are, uh, we have 40 use cases. As you can see from some of these, I'll, I'll read some out. These are use cases which tell you things like, how do you create a personalized collections treatment? How do you do personalization of real-time interaction in this assisted care? Um, how do you increase effectiveness of customer self-service, etc.? Very interesting and very practical ways of getting your CEM department going. Um, in in this current cycle, uh, what we need is new use cases. Uh, we we are trying to uh, enhance our guidebook for the implementation of this use case. We want to benchmark, we want stories, we want to add new processes, uh, you know, CEM processes, so that uh, we want to create a ready reckoner which is complete, you know, whole, complete, and easily usable to start up a CEM practice. The return on investment calculator that I had mentioned earlier is, is really in interesting. There are use cases in which there are, uh, you know, it's, it's a uh, spreadsheet with built-in calculations. You use the use cases, you input some, um, uh, you know, KQIs and so on, and out comes your, uh, you know, return on your investment. Um, we, as I had said, we had over 500 metrics for CEM, um, and uh, you know they are in the life, you know, broken up by the life cycle phases. So uh, you know you have a very handy set of of KPIs that you can use to measure the uh, efficacy of your uh, CEM program. Omnichannel. Uh, we have the imperatives of omnichannel functional capabilities. We have a maturity model. We have over a hundred requirements for omnichannelization, and we have a reference architecture. I'm not going to go into all of these details. When you get the recording, you can read through, uh, you know, some of them. Um, what we are planning to do with this next release is to update the maturity model. We, we are trying to move from uh, 
addressing the omni-channel issues, not just of communication service providers, but generically for any digital service provider, that is the CSP to DSP. We are, we are doing a proof of value of uh, a single view of the customer. We are bringing data analytics into omni-channel. What are the data analytics needed for successful omni-channelization? Um, and we are doing a DSP reference architecture. Lifecycle model, I think I spoke to this, uh, the 360 degree lifecycle model. You have, um, we have very interesting material on not just describing uh, each of these phases and, um, you know, omni-channel has the details of the uh, the channel and sub-channels and how they, uh, you know, which phases these channels and sub-channels apply to vis-a-vis -vis given requirements. We have all kinds of interesting stuff on all of this. Um, just go and read it. It's a lot of fun reading. We have uh, journey analytics. We have uh, a lot of, uh, you know, important, you know, new paradigm thinking in terms of how you do analytics and, and convert that into insights and facts that you can use for your custom, for, for betterment of your customer experience. A new thing that we are working on is uh, CEM scores. So basically the, the you know, this is the, um, out, inside out view of the of the customer so far we've had uh, surveys and NPS as the only types of scores you can you 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 can collect for a customer we are trying to create other scores which are uh, you know give a more outside in view of the company we are trying to define them and these are probably some of the dimensions on which they are being defined So for the 360 degree view of the customer, um, we are looking at, uh, you know, further defining out customer sentiment. There's a qualitative definition now uh, through the CEM scores and so on. We're trying to make it a little more uh, quantitative, if you will. We started a new uh, work stream called the Experience Integrator, which is a new revenue generating opportunity for service providers to become the experience integrator across multiple parties in a value fabric for an open digital ecosystem. Um, so this is something that service providers find very exciting and um, uh, sooner or later it's going to happen. We are trying to define the, uh, the common language for, for this area. Um, so this is this is basically why I said that the experience integrator is going to happen um, in the uh, in the current uh, day and age or in this slightly near past. What we did was that you had uh, online stores, mobile apps, you know, that that customers could ex access. Today, what we have are aggregators. You know, aggregators are companies like maybe Priceline.com or or companies like that which will aggregate information from multiple providers and present one view to you. Um, however, they don't operate through the full life cycle of the customer and they do not necessarily operate on every aspect of a service. Uh, what What is going to happen is with the explosion of demand uh, coming from not just the humans but also their smart devices which are connected with each other, there is going to be such an explosion of demand that, uh, you know, an experience integrator is almost going to become a necessity so that the customer is able to handle um, what is happening with their services, uh, you know, in without going bananas. So the customer who will be faced with challenges like who should I contact my services, who will manage so many connected devices, who will keep, keep me in, informed, or who should I contact if I have multiple parties for my services. All of this is uh, provides an opportunity to a service provider to create this experience integrator. As I said, this will be a big revenue generating uh, paradigm shifting uh, new stuff and we are trying to develop the language for this. 
so much for customer experience management. Quickly, I'm going to recap. We, we talked about uh, the ROI calculator, experience integrator, CEM scores, defining sentiments more, doing data journey analytics, uh, doing data analytics for omni-channel, creating a new reference architecture for omni-channel, which is good for digital service providers. Um, so these are some of the work that we are doing in this cycle. Now I'll move on to data analytics. Data analytics is um, some of the things that we've seen are uh, are important are uh, for in where data analytics is being used is in network management, uh, customer support, uh, churn management, service management, fraud optimizations. Um, so some of the, some of the stuff that is being used. Um, that that is that data analytics is being used for. So um, our our experience at TM Forum, talking with multiple providers, vendors, so on, we find that data analytics is being. Um, although companies do have platforms and various tools, um, the approach to using it is siloed. It's not standard. It's not consistently used across the enterprise. Uh, what we want to get to is a cross-organizational, business-driven, proactive usage of data analytics. The current assets that we have, again, at tmforum.org, Standards and Adoption Resource Library, uh, is um, a solution suite consisting of a guidebook, a business value roadmap, maturity model, 70 use cases, a reference architecture, and building blocks for, for uh, creating um, a data analytics platform. We also have an analytics uh, uh, repository, big data repository, which consists, it, it's work in progress, uh, which is uh, a data dictionary of, um, of data entities for um, OSS, BSS systems. We have a data monetization introductory guides uh, guide. Um, we have uh, uh, lots and lots of metrics, and we have uh, processes that are necessary for data um, for to have a successful data analytics, uh, you know, enterprise-wide data analytics usage. We also have data. Uh, analytics governance model, which you know I ran out of space here, and lots of other stuff. When you read through it, you'll you'll find them. We are uh, enhancing the processes now um, in the for data analytics by doing this is a current work that is happening um, by mapping it to uh, domains within eTom. I'm not going to go into a uh, a sidebar on eTom because that would take up a lot of time, but suffice it to say that eTom has multiple domains of processes and we are looking, looking at them to see whether they are, uh, they need uh, data analytics processes within them so that data analytics is pervasive across uh, the entire organization. So that's the work in, that's happening in this work stream. Um, I wanted to give you a pictorial view of what we have today. Our reference model, um, which reference architecture, uh, 70 use cases, external monetization, building blocks. I'm not sure why the maturity model picture is showing as blanks. It's probably the colors, which is which I've used on that. Somehow it's not showing up. And the uh, we have the big data repository for OSS, PSS data elements, as I said. Um, oh, there it is. Okay, business value roadmap. Uh, we we talk about you how you can use this roadmap. Uh, it 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 provides the guide rails and uh, you know step by step of how to achieve a common uh, enterprise wide data analytics uh, approach, data driven approach and data analytics approach. 
uh, our maturity model is actually pretty widely used within companies because companies are, are now seeing that they have an ad hoc siloed approach to their data analytics. Uh, we are enhancing this uh, maturity model now by uh, adding an assessment toolkit to it uh, so that companies have a ready toolkit for using that maturity model. Our 70 use cases are, uh, you know, this is an, uh, a, a kind of a snapshot of what these use cases are like. So, for example, I'm going to take from the middle column, real-time traffic inf information based on mobile device, value-based network planning, um, order impact analysis policy-based capacity management, etc. So you can very well see that these use cases are, are situations where data analytics would be key. So these are where you can use data analytics profitably. That's what um, uh, these use cases uh, aim to do. The, anal the, the OSS, BSS uh, data entities in the uh, analytics big data repository in the data dictionary, I wanted to give you a, a sense of the kind of detail of stuff that we have in this uh, data lake. Uh, so I took one uh, example, a rating billing uh, prepaid uh, sample, and the, the fields, the types, the dimensions, all of these are uh, defined. What's next? We want to add to our uh, use cases. We are uh, doing, um, we want to, our building blocks need to be updated. The business value roadmap uh, probably needs to be refined. The maturity model assessment toolkit is being worked on. The processes in line with ETOM I showed to you. We've kicked off a new work stream called fraud analytics. Uh, the scope definition is going to start soon and the, uh, the data lake that I just showed you before this, that's also work that's in progress. So this is just a repeat of what I just said. In addition to that, please pay attention to the word that's called corporate work. We are also doing uh, plugging in, in in the spirit of how do we do data analytics uh, fruitfully and organization-wide. We are now working with the uh, with the uh, with the Internet of Things as well as with the network uh, virtualization and DevOps to, to help them identify their data analytics needs. In data monetization, we do have an introductory guide uh, which has 12 use cases on how data can be monetized for for a service provider, how what opportunities they can avail of to monetize their data. We have a reference architecture which uh, you can uh, look at and we have a pretty good uh, summation of security and privacy. Of course, you know, security and privacy laws and needs change with time very quickly and with geographies. So, you know, this section um, constantly needs, needs updating. And uh, I think it was last updated uh, last year, and so it's, you know, we could always do with updates there. Now, in the hyper-connected virtual world, right, um, we have a, a life cycle model for digital customer journeys. We have metrics for virtual networks and uh, customer premise equipment. We have uh, data monetization use cases, smart city maturity model, and what we are, as I said, we are working on data analytics for uh, virtual networks and services. Uh, we want to go from the service provider centric portfolio to uh, the, you know, virtualized uh, open ecosystems causing new revenues and we are supporting these uh, these initiatives on uh, internet of everything and virtualization by bringing to them data analytics and customer experience uh, SME knowledge uh, to to help them to define these virtual and open ecosystems 
The final uh, project that we work with is metrics. Um, so today our metric con metrics database contains um, the tw slightly over 2,100 metrics. Um, the, uh, some of the highest level metrics are published in a scorecard, which you see on the uh, right bottom side. Um, we have um, the, the exact number is 2153. Um, and uh, the right side uh, tells you some of the areas or where we have mined these metrics from. We have developed a, a very fine a science to the understanding, definition, and ingestion of metrics such that they are, uh, they are clear, they are not duplicated, they are not, um, uh, you know, so loose that people can put any interpretation on them. Um, they are quite rigorous, quite rigid, and uh, in fact, they, their quality is, is acknowledged well across other standards bodies. So other groups like Quest and Etsy and so on, which do a lot of work with metrics, they are now collaborating with us because of their recognition of the quality of our database. Here are some of the, um, you know, just a snapshot of some of the metrics that we have. Um, as you can see in column D, we have a maturity level. It goes from one, which is what someone proposes, all the way to five, which is a highest level of maturity where a metric is benchmarked and you have actual values to support the, that maturity. So companies give, uh, uh, com not, not companies, I mean, uh, various groups, uh, whether they be other collaboration projects or uh, uh, catalyst projects, they will provide us with actual metrics. We go through an, uh, an ingestion process, which is pretty rigorous, and, and it then becomes part of our database. <clears throat> Most metrics come in as a proposed metrics, and then over time, we work to uh, mature them to higher levels. We, so be, we always need help in, uh, you know, growing this database because the larger, more comprehensive this database, the more uh, members benefit from it. So now I'm going to jump into why, why am I telling you all of this? What is it in, in it for you, right? Um, what's in it for you is to tackle big challenges, uh, develop working relationships, gain expertise, provide thought leadership, see other thought leadership in work, influence the direction of, of thought leadership, and do some virtual R&D with people from other, other companies, you know, like-minded people. So if you remember that, that pyramid I showed you with the hierarchy of needs, there is those common challenges, you know. This is the place where you can influence, participate, gain, uh, contribute, um, form, form relationships, partnerships, friendships, you know, through, through going through various uh, collaborations uh, on various, whatever topics interest you. In terms of personal development, it, what this is going to do for you is it will constantly increase your knowledge of the state of the art. You get, you get the stamp of being a thought leader, you broaden your knowledge, uh, you have the reward of uh, uh, sharing and learning from some of the brightest minds in the industry. Um, you get the opportunity to exercise and refine your, your speaking skills and your influencing skills in, in group dynamics. Um, there are leadership opportunities available, so you know you can you can lead a virtual team, which which will in, give you some uh, you know project leadership uh, ch challenges and rewards and, and understanding. It becomes a forum for personal uh, networking, and uh, you know people, everyone who attends any action week or action day has always come back with one. Thing that they will say is it has been fantastic meeting like-minded people from other companies. How do you go about joining? First thing is you have to ensure your company is a TM Forum member, which I know it is for all of you. All of you, you go into tmforum.org and you you sign up. 
um, and then your company is going to there'll be an IP contact of your company who gets an automated mail um, that, that and that 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 automated that once that person says okay you automatically are a member uh, once you once that that process is done you go and join whichever project data analytics or CEM or metrics um, when you click on join and give it 24 hours for the databases to sync up and 24 hours later you have access to the online material of work that is being done right now open up the calendar there and you and accept the weekly meeting calls join brainstorm enjoy yourself uh, average participant commitment is about an hour and a half per week leaders have a commitment is about uh, a little is is more but it's not consistently uh, you know a full working day it 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 ranges between a quarter of a working day to a full working day in a week depending on where we are in the cycle of work um, so as I, I'm going to repeat again the steps, you go to tmforum.org, you register, then once you have registered and your IP has given clearance, you drop down on collaborative R&D and you click on one of these and it'll, let, it'll ask you to join the project. Uh, once you have joined those projects, uh, you will be you can go into any of these spaces um, it will give you access to these spaces go into these spaces and uh, once you've gone into these spaces they will be on your favorites of your spaces which is uh, if you can see my cursor will be on the drop down of these spaces and you can start participating so I just opened up one space which was uh, this customer experience management there is this calendar and you open up the calendar and start joining the calls you can also read about uh, how do you get started how do you get engaged you're always free to drop me a note anytime you have questions on how do you join these typically all the work gets done through this wiki online wiki and uh, through this uh, work in progress that you're seeing um, and you know here's some experience of the kinds of things that we work on so the weekly calls that we have are um, are listed here um, however I'm not going to uh, read them all out as I said once you join the projects you go into the wiki click on the calendar I'm going to go back up here so I can show you um, so say, say you have joined the customer experience management, right? You've, you had clicked on join, you're here, you click on the calendar, you'll see a calendar of all the weekly calls. These are the calls that are, that are listed here and uh, you can join whichever ones you know, are uh, of interest to you. So this is our call to you to come and join, be in good company. Uh, join our collaboration. It's unique. It's rewarding. It's fun, and you have a lot of uh, you. You, I promise you, if nothing else, you're going to really mind challenging wise have a lot of fun doing this. Okay, that's it. Uh, the rest. So, um, how are we doing on time? We have a few minutes. So, uh, are there any questions? Hi Snigda, it's Ailish here. Yes. Hi everyone. Um, I'm I'm Ailish Class, and I, I work in TM Forum as well. I thought maybe it might.